this is Scott from Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. I'm going to do a third and final knife video. The video is going to be more about hunting knives and sheath knives. These are knives that I actually take when I go hunting for whitetail or if I go on a moose hunt, something like that. Um, and they're more of a heavy duty tool. I see them as more of a heavy duty tool than I do as uh, cutlery like the other knives that I've showed you. Some of these are actually also defensive weapons. Um, one in particular used by our military at great length. They also make great field knives and come any other purposes beyond that. First off, we'll start with the uh, biggest and the most ugly. This actually is a uh, K-Bar U.S. Marine fighting knife, but it wasn't made by K-Bar. That's the type of type of knife that it is. This one was actually um, made by Camellius in New York. Now they've since gone out of business. Uh, it's got the anodized blackened finish on it, um, black leather stacked handle, and it is just a rugged, beastly knife. K-Bar was named the Marine, U.S. Marine fighting knife. This knife was actually designed to fight other people with. Of course, I've never used it for that, but it makes a great field knife. You've got the hammer with the end of it. You can drive in tent pegs. It makes a great butcher knife. We used to go and buy uh, whole sections, like whole New York sirloin. We'd buy the whole back strap and cut it into steaks. I bring it home and cut it up. This makes a great knife for doing stuff like that, for cutting meat. It's, it's got a heavy, thick blade, as does the next knife I'm going to talk about. And I'll explain why that's important. A nice, broad, heavy, thick blade. This second knife is uh, from Ontario Knife Company. It's called a Rat 5. I believe that's because it has a 5-inch blade. Uh, and I don't know what the rat signified, but there was the Rat 5, the Rat 7. I think now they've got a Rat 3. Um, this particular one has been abused terribly. I had it, it got rusty, uh, it's been since polished, originally it had the, the black like a uh, coated blade like that one does, but it got to, to be so bad I just buffed it all off and now it's, it's getting rusty because it's, uh, it's carbon steel, it's not stainless. It holds an edge, you can sharpen it really, really sharp and it doesn't take a lot of effort to sharpen it. And also, again, big, broad, wide blade. The reason that's important is because both of these big knives here could also be used in place of a hatchet to split wood. Um, obviously it's not heavy enough to, to chop with very much, but what you can do is you can hold it on a piece of wood and take another piece of wood and beat on it. It's called batoning and you can baton that through a piece of wood and split it to split kindling to start a campfire. Uh, you could do that with the K-Bar too. There's no reason you couldn't. But those would both, not only, I would consider those fighting knives. They're uh, Both would be good butcher knives. They're survival knives. They're field knives. That's, that's what they are. You could probably do a pretty good job skinning large game with the Rat 5. Not so much the K-Bar. It's got too much of a long straight blade without as much of a curve. But that's all personal preference too. Okay, this next knife I bought thinking it was going to make a great hunting knife. That's a uh, actually a Kershaw military boot knife. And it, it does make a good hunting knife. It really does. But the problem that I had with it was that the handle is so nice and so smooth that when you're actually using it in the field to field dress an animal, it gets slippery. You get stuff on your hands, things get slippery. You don't want a slippery knife. <laughs> it's a bad idea. <laughs> Otherwise, the animal's blood might not be the only blood you're spilling. It's easy to get cut. Very easy. Quality knife, very nice. And again, it's a military knife. It's, an, it's a fighting knife. Also, that one I would say would make a good hunting knife. This next one, this is a... Uh, <laughs> It's probably the most expensive knife I own, or ever will. This was actually custom made for me by a guy that I met online several years ago. It's a Nesmok 
He called it a Northern Maine Nesmok. And uh, this was made by a, a, a guy named Jason Chassis. Calls himself Kid Couteau. That's the name of his knife company, Kid Couteau Knives. And this was all made out of materials from the sawmill that I worked at at the time. This uh, blade and, of course, the solid handle that goes all the way to the end, that was uh, ground from a, a piece of large circular saw. And these grips were made from a, a substance called micarta that the guide blocks from my band saws ran on. So the only thing that didn't come out of my sawmill were the brass rivets. The rest of it was all material that I provided him with from my sawmill. And he gets a lot of money for his custom made knives. He really, and they're worth it. It's a beautiful knife. I mean, that's some serious quality stuff. It's so nice, I don't take it out much. I'm afraid to take it hunting. I take it anywhere in the woods. I'm afraid I'll lose it. And I don't want to do that. So pretty much a safe queen. Now we'll get down to the knives that I actually do use all the time. These are probably two of the most common hunting knives in the world. If you go into any sporting goods shop, you're going to find one of these knives or one very similar. They're still very available and reasonably cheap. I think they can be had for around 40 bucks, maybe 50. I don't know. This particular one is my Buck 110 folder. Um, it's too big really to be carried in a pocket, so it's really a sheath knife in my in my world. This is my hunting knife. This is the knife that I carry all the time when I'm hunting in the state of Maine. Um, it's the first hunting knife that I ever had that was really my own. I bought this and a knife for my dad with money that I made from the first real job that I ever had. The first paycheck, the first job, I went to a Woolworth store and bought a couple of buck knives, one for me and one for my dad. I think it was his birthday. But um, these exact knives are still available today. They may not be as, as refined and as polished as this old one is. Some of that may be wear. But it seems to me like the old ones may have been a little a little nicer, a little more contoured. These are great knives. Um, I don't carry it as a general purpose knife anymore. I used to, but I do carry it during hunting season. If I'm wearing a belt, I will carry this on my belt. And there's another school of thought, and probably just as common to the Buck 110 folder. You're going to find these old-timer Schrade. We used to call them sharp fingers when they first came out because of the shape of the because of the shape of the blade. It was a sharp finger, and uh, why I love these is for skinning. They're great for skinning anything from uh, large game right up all the way down through small game. It's just the type of a point they have. It's a great skinning knife, but they also make great all around hunting knives too. Obviously. You're not going to go batoning it through a piece of oak to make kindling, but that is a very, very nice knife. Now, both of these are still very affordable, and like I said, you'll find them in most any sporting goods store. I know uh, around this time of year, Cabela's, Bass Pro Shops, whatever, is going to have a dump truck load of them, and like I said, they're not expensive. I think they're well worth it. I think everybody should have one. Hell, have both. Uh, that's about the extent of my whole uh, knife collection. I guess you've seen it in all these three videos. Some of mine, some have been borrowed. I'm not really a knife guy. To me, a knife is a tool. But the philosophy of use, even though they're all similar, is actually quite different. That's kind of what I wanted to touch on. You know, and even though... These big knives like this, uh, there aren't as many uses for them at the time that you need them for something that they really excel at. is why you're going to be glad you have it, like uh, butchering a large animal or uh, maybe, you know, if you're skinning, you know, a moose or something, you might want that. You could skin a deer with it too, but this is really designed to skin larger animals. But that's my philosophy of use on hunting knives. Just like with the pocket knives, they all have their own specific purpose. So once again, I'm 
Scott from Whiskey and Sunshine, and have a great day.